Boys have grown really quickly. Yes, they did. It's three years ago that we started our adoption journey. Three remember? years. Yeah. Three years when we went to the information evening. Yeah. Sat in this really awkward room with lots of very nervous people and listening. I, I didn't find it that awkward. You just don't know what to expect, do you? Especially as gay adopters, you you kind of feel a bit, um, I don't know, worried that you're going to have people looking at you there. Well, I suppose you just don't know what the rea reaction is going to be. Yeah, right? no, absolutely. We were the only gay couple in the in that initial session. Yes, we were. We were, actually. But uh, there was no special reaction. No. no. Uh, I mean, if, if anything, people were incredibly... Um, went out of their way to be incredibly accepting or rather to make us feel comfortable. Um, people were just very nice. You know, in that, initial, in, the, in that initial meeting where we went to find out about what the process was and we met our Bernardo's social worker who then turned out to be our actual social worker which we obviously at the time we didn't know he would be but um, it was for me very it was an eye-opener. There's yeah. a lot of information to take in. Who knew that you would go through so... You had... There was so much to go through. And I remember when we, when we left and we were walking back to the car park, there was so... We, we left with a massive load of paperwork. It was phenomenal. It was about that thick. And I kid you not, and anyone who's gone through the process knows that that's not an exaggeration. You leave with a pile of paper that thick. Um, but I think I, I wasn't prepared for, I think, the, the sheer volume of meetings that we would have to then have following that. Yeah, absolutely. What was the strangest thing of that process for you? I don't know if I had one thing that was the strangest. Mm. I, I think the whole the whole process is quite strange. I mean, especially in the first parts, because it's such an intrusive thing, isn't it? I mean, we we sat down with or um, uh, the caseworker, um, and I remember, you know, the well. First of all, filling out all those forms, all those paperwork, it is already. I mean, it is a very daunting task, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but I think the, que the sort of questions that they ask in the sort of details, things like asking about your past partners, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have expected that to, to come up. No, and they also having to be a reference. And then having to put them down as people for them to contact that they're going to speak to yes. is incredibly sort of just weird and scary. I mean, not that there was anything to be scared about, but you know, that's... Uh, I can imagine how it must be daunting for a lot of people to have yeah. to put that information down. Well, what I found very weird were the exchange fairs. Remember these? You know, when we went to those places where all the local councils would come and would have pictures of children and you would walk around and see whether there is a picture of some children which, you know, you were interested and then you could talk with their social worker. I found that really odd. But then we used uh, a number of adoption websites where local um, uh, councils would post profiles of children. Yeah, um, and, uh, and agencies um, yes. as well. Um, yeah, I mean, and then, but it's, it's still much of the same, wasn't it? it it's, it's profiles of children uh, with their pictures and then videos, um, which I actually found better than going to those fairs. Yeah. I, I felt because you you know you, you sort of sat at your computer and you just you just look at them and uh, <laughs> and it's in the safety of your home isn't yeah it? I, I, it was I think it was less less bizarre for me to do that than when when you when you were at those fairs but you know going a few steps back yeah um, do you remember when we had to go through and do the the two day training yes those were a bit odd. In that group, we did have gay another gay couple. We had another gay couple, um, um, which that, and that was quite good to see. And it was an English German combination as well. Yes, so it's yes. Quite funny. Very interestingly, one of the things that I, was very striking was how um, how blunt and how candid they are 
in that initial meet, in that initial first day of training, um, where they talk about some of the the really you know real and challenging circumstances under which children then come into care. Because I think a lot of times, and we've been asked these questions, you know, since since we've adopted, like. Um, when we've met people and then we tell them that we've yeah. adopted and people assume that, um, some people assume that, you know, these are children who have been abandoned or, you know, the, the sort of television scenario of being left in a basket at a, yeah. you know, at a, a children's home. Or both parents need a diet. Dying, exactly. yeah. and, and these are the assumptions that people have. But and it just doesn't happen. It, does, it doesn't. Um, you know, most children have come from abusive homes, have come from homes of serious and, you know, detrimental neglect and, you know, just appalling circumstances, Circum you know, alcoholism, drug use, mm. um, sexual abuse. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's just mind blowing. And I remember when we, when we were in that first day of training and the, the worst of it was when we had to do that, that diary. Yes. That, that child's diary. So it was a diary of a, I think she was like six year old, six years old. So she would have been about the age of when, roughly around the same age as when our older son would have come to us yes. um, when we adopted him. And now, obviously, remembering that story is 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 it, it, it sort of dawns on you that you know when we look at him and see his age and his vulnerability. I mean, of course, everyone knows children are vulnerable, but then. I think it's different when you can sort of relate one to one and uh, sort of personally. Um, and in, you know, reading that horrific diary of how her father would sexually abuse her and then, you know, having gone to her mother to tell her about this and then her mother would, um, you know, sort of just dismiss it and yeah. it just, just mad and then were, the whole entire room was just in tears mm. and I remember that so vividly and then the next day we had one couple who decided that they couldn't go ahead because they thought well actually given the challenges that these children will come with they, did, they didn't think they could they could they could do it you know I, I still remember those two boys who we had a match with yeah and that didn't work out no. which was incredibly frustrating and you know it, it's sort of it's a massive blow isn't it because you 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 spend all of this time going through doing the paperwork and getting ready and prepared for it and then you know after for the better part of a year you finally get to the point where you are, you think, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to, the end result is, is very near. Yes. And, you know, we had, by this time, they had said to us, you know, they were interested and we went and we did the meeting with their, the kids' social worker and we were sat in that room and then it was blatantly obvious from the start of the conversation that it was going to go nowhere. I was quite emotional about that, not just because that is obviously, you know, quite a, you know, intense part of the process, but also because I felt this had nothing to do apart from their social workers simply not liking it. You could see when she came and picked up from reception, something she must not have spotted in our file. She just looked at us and already knew in that moment that is not going to go anywhere. No, she was incredibly negative and about the children. She was trying to put us off. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then, you know, obviously it didn't work out. But then, as if by magic, um, you know, very, it was literally this, this like the same week, wasn't it? Yes. When online, you were, you were away. Yes, indeed, yeah. You were away. And then I had a conversation with the boy's social worker. Yes. Which went incredibly well. Um, you know, they liked our profile, we liked, well, I liked the boys' profile, <laughs> and yeah. I remember sending the information to you, and immediately you were sort of taken by their pictures and the information in their profile as well, and they were, they were the perfect age, so two 
and five mm-hmm. at the time. <clears throat> and they were so cute and just lovable pictures. I mean, and, and just from the description, obviously their personalities, yes. what they des- how they describe them seemed exactly like two children that we could love. And then of course the just reading their stories as well in terms of the things they'd gone through that sort of, you know, I, I felt something there. And then of course we, you know, then we, we, we spoke to the, the social worker and it was abundantly clear that this was going to be a good match. I mean, I felt very good about it from mm-hmm. the outset, but I was very nervous because, you know, not, not less than a week ago, yeah, it was only a few days to be fair. Yeah, that negative. That we had that, and you know, but I must say, by comparison, the yeah, the meeting with our boy social worker felt very different to the the previous one. Absolutely, and then remember, she invited us to come to um, one of the adoption events, you know, that are those, they do these adoption events which they copied from the US where they have children which they feel they're harder to place, uh, which believe they go to some sort of play event with clowns and magicians and where other adults come and play with them. But the adults happen to be prospective adopters. And so the boy's social worker said she could invite us to the event and that would be a chance for us to to meet the boys. Yeah, I remember that. So we had to drive quite a while to the place where the event was. And uh, that was quite surreal, wasn't it? To to walk into the room and then suddenly just time sped up. And then suddenly we were walking, um, you know, into the room and then we saw immediately spotted the boys with their foster carers. Um, And I felt, I I was totally overwhelmed because I just felt we were about to meet our future children. We, yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we, did. did. <laughs> we didn't know know it at the time, but I think you know what the 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 thing the thing that struck me really was, um, which was really interesting, I suppose, is that you know there are so many children there, so yeah. many children there. We we sort of immediately sort of bonded with them actually because they mm. they took to us. You know, they were talking to us. They were playing with us. They were very engaged. They were very interested in um, knowing who we were. And again, obviously, they'd been told that, you know, they're going to this event um, and, you know, they're, they're going to meet pot- a p- potential new family. Um, and I suppose it's a bit weird. It must be also very strange for the children involved as well, because I found it quite bizarre. But I relaxed afterwards and I think, you know, we can sort of process things and understand, you know, we're the ones going into it looking for um, a family, whereas they're just there, um, you know, probably even though people ex- it's been explained to them, still the understanding of what's actually happening mm-hmm. is not there. And I don't even think even today they'll have an understanding of it. I suppose or eldest will, or eldest one will, because to some, you know, he's a, he's a bit older and he, he get, he'll get more of it. Yeah, that was a, that was a, a very intense day and then you had to drive back because I could not concentrate No, I, no. I was actually quite, quite overwhelmed and then, and then from that it really totally sped up because the social workers were convinced that this would be a good match. We went to matching panel. And then from matching panel, the, the clock just starts racing, isn't it? We decorated their rooms and then drove where um, the boys left with the foster carers and suddenly started introduction. Yeah. And I think pretty much about a month or so from the time we first met them, Absolutely. That, that, that we got to the point of, no, it was probably about a couple of months actually, yes, yeah. from the point of actually meeting them, going through to the matching panel and getting the formal approval um, I found the matching panel process. I thought it'd be a lot more daunting. I mean, I was, I was terribly nervous. Me too. Um, but but then it turned out not to be as nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. Actually, in reality, it felt more nerve wracking than it than it was when you when you finally leave and you know you've got these twelve people, these twelve people who 
who've sat there from various backgrounds, you know, some of them are adopters, some of them have been adopted, some of them are medical professionals, some of them are, you know, social workers in other fields or in adoption as well. Um, but all sort of having some sort of link to childcare and understanding of what children in the care system go through. Um, and then, you know, they, they have to sit there and they have to listen to your story. Why do you want to adopt? And I remember thinking like before, the weeks before that, when we were preparing all our statements and filling yet more form filling, yes. I think we filled in about eight or nine different forms in, in that process of why do you want to adopt them? What, what's their life going to look like with you? What are your plans? What are your future mm. plans? What are the challenges you think you're going to face? How are you going to deal with those challenges? Um, you know, all the things that, yes, you think about, but then to articulate it in intricate detail on a piece of, several pieces of paper is just, yeah, that's, um, it was, it was tough. And then obviously there are these 12 people who are sat there who've read it and they know everything about you. I mean, they know you inside out because mm -hmm. they've had, first of all, they've had the detailed documentation of your whole entire life's history back to your childhood. And then, of course, they have that additional piece of document. And then they sit there and they ask you a couple of questions. I, I just felt it was, you know what, that was perhaps another, sec the second most strangest scenario. And then remember, straight after the matching panel was confirmed, we then actually drove to the foster carer's house where yeah. the children weren't there because there, you know, there wasn't the time for, for them to meet yeah, us. Yeah, they again. didn't know yet. But we yeah. took half of their toys back home. So yeah. straight from matching panel, we drove back with the entire car full of toys. Yeah. And then we suddenly had their, their things in the house, our yeah. house already. Yeah, that was that was also quite strange. It was a bit, it was, well, I say strange, it was more surreal. It was, it was definitely, um, it sort of made the reality more real. Yes. <laughs> hey, I think, you know what was strange? I think, when you think back and then I think about the, after we'd done all the decorating in their rooms and we'd, you know, bought all the new furniture and all the new furniture had arrived and we'd done it. And I remember I said to you one evening about how it felt so empty, yeah. even though all the furniture was in there. And then when we put all their toys in there and it started to look like a proper child's bedroom with mm. all their toys in there and we knew it was their toys it's not toys we would bought it was you know it was theirs but it felt different I know and then obviously we started the introduction and that was another one where time suddenly just disappeared I just remember us driving again where they live having this pre-meeting with everybody involved social workers foster carers and then suddenly we are in front of the foster carers house and then remember when we rang the bell and then suddenly those two boys screaming, screaming daddy and papa. Yeah. That was also very overwhelming, I have to say. Yeah. But good. But, but I think also it was quite, it was quite good. I think initially, I mean, it was, I was very nervous, I mm. must say, because you just, I think, you know, although we had that chat before with the social work and she said, you know, they've been told and they, they, they were happy, they remembered us, they knew who we were. We'd done that video for them, the, like, it was like four weeks, almost four weeks before we met them again, yes. we would meet them again. And, um, so they had that and they had the, the little beers that we'd sent to them as well. Yes. Which apparently they, they didn't, they didn't once put down since no. they got them. And they also watched that video a million times. They watched the video a million times, the DVD a million times. And then we, uh, and yeah, and then we were there in front of the house, and it was so bizarre because you know then it was the first time in two months, two and a half months maybe that we again see them, mm. um, and then they're calling us daddy and papa, yes, from day one, yes, and then two weeks later, and then two weeks later they, they arrived home. here, yes. <laughs> they arrived home. And, uh, and stayed. And stayed. And now two years on, it doesn't, I can't even remember what that felt like in the sense of it just feels like they've always been here. It's just very, um, sort of normal family life. 
And I think, you know, it was interesting is that I couldn't wait to get to the point where it felt like normal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I I was so happy that they were they were finally here and that we finally had them and that we, you know, our family was together. But I really wanted the time to just move on quickly so that it could feel just normal. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It was all very new and you're still finding your footing and they're still finding their footing and we had, you know, we had a huge amount of emotional stuff from them, huge emotional stuff from us, but, you know, mostly them in terms of naturally settling in. So everything was, was new and it was not, it, it's so nice now that they've come on leaps and bounds in many different areas of their lives and now it's just all normal. Absolutely. And it's, uh, yeah, and we're, you know, we're, we're parents now, properly grown up, warrior ones, school ones. I know, it's, you know, it's all very, um, it's all very suburban and <laughs> very sort of just normal. Which is, and that's the nice thing about it because you, I think um, you you then feel like the what we set out to achieve, what we always wanted, was the family, and now we have that. And it, the 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 good thing is they're settled and they're happy and they're thriving and they're doing amazingly at school and you know making friends and they have friends and the friends are people who are genuine and who don't care that they have two dads and they can just get on with life and mm -hmm. it's not even, an, it's a non-issue. It's, it's so, not something that's ever come up for them, you know, and which is wonderful and lovely and, you know, they can have the lives that they deserve. You know, one of the things that I found quite interesting that we've, that's come out of, uh, out of that whole process as well, is that the sheer number of gay couples mm -hmm. that we met who had either already adopted or, in the process, or yeah. were in the process with us and who now also Absolutely. have their lovely families and most of them we, we've kept in touch with and you know we, we're friends with them but it's also quite wonderful to to see that there are lots of other families that look like ours and that the kids can can see families that look like their family as well so it's Father's Day on the 18th of June. Yes, I'm looking forward to all our cards. Me too. Let's every year, right. every year we get handmade cards yeah. from our kids. Um, I have to say that they, they, they've improved mm -hmm. over the years. The little one still gives us lots of scribbles. Yes. And then we have to try and remember which each, what each scribble means. And anybody with children, I'm sure, will have experienced the same thing. I think the thing that sticks with me though is just the sheer number of children that are still in the system and still mm -hmm. need caring homes. You know, we've got over 70,000 children who are still in the, in the care system and, you know, year to year we still have over 3,000 children up for adoption every single year and still not enough adopters. Yes. On the flip side though, um, there are people out there who you know, either can't have children naturally, um, gay couples like us who, you know, really want to have a family and we think an adoption is a really sort of good route for us. It means that we're able to provide a happy ending for children who otherwise would have not had um, the most positive of outcomes. And I think that's, you know, that's what you've got to take away from that. Um, we had a great experience with Bernardo's, they're, I always recommend Bernardas. I mean, we, we, that's who we went through in there. You know, they've, they're experts in their, in their area. They've been doing it for so many years. And I think, interestingly, um, one of the first, if not the first um, agency before it was even sort of popular to do so, the first one to, to sort of um, to support gay adopters as well. Yes, and interestingly, I met, remember I told you when I uh, did the Stonewall Leadership Seminar, I actually met, um, uh, in my group was a, a woman who is working for Barnados and who actually was the first ever gay adopter with Barnados. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they do great work. Yes. Um, and, I, and I like the fact that they've 
supported um, gay adopters for so many years. And I think, you know, this is why our experience was so, um, uh, so it's such a positive one because they're so open and there was no, um, you know, there was no, not even an inkling of any negative feeling. I mean, every single person that we dealt with was really positive and supportive um, of us as a couple. It didn't even factor in to the equation that we were a gay couple. Uh, they just dealt with us as two people who are in a relationship who were looking to adopt children. That's that's it. You know, and I think they're brilliant. I think they're brilliant. Me too.